if we don't build systems in put systems in place that actually recognize our differences and you know in such a way that we're able to work together and find what, what i would call common interests that's the de that's devoid of you know our religious oh, differences yeah. ethnic, and all of that we may not be able to advance as a people i agree so, i, I, I always, agree i always consider it to I always consider it to, you know, you, everyone being in a boat and some are paddling to move forward, others are paddling to move backwards. It's not that the boats would not move. The only thing is that the boats will capsize. That's the truth. I mean, <laughs> we are trying to help them build a more inclusive workspace where persons with disabilities, persons with different, you know, differences. I, I would just say that in, in Nigeria, everyone's a mm. victim of discrimination, one way or the other. Yes, like, yes. From the person that is called Omona in the office yes. or the person that is you know that simply because of the fact that she's got a child with an additional need mm. she's considered to be lazy you know yeah. in the office everyone's a victim and so not until we're able to build you know these in inclusive workspaces will we be able to maximize the potential that every employee has to offer wow, so good to be here again wow Wonderful. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. It feels so good to be back here. Uh, yeah. I'm getting familiar to the room. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. This 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 is your it's a wonderful third, third time. Third yeah. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. Very it's good. A wonderful place to be. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for the invitation. I know, I know you have been very very busy. You know. We are trying yeah. not to be. We are trying not to be. It, it never <laughs> no, works. It never no, works. No. <laughs> see, I want it to be as busy as mm. possible. Mm. The, 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 see, now, when it comes to business, eh, yeah. I'm not saying somebody who is not doing anything just just behaving oh. as if he's doing something. No, no, <laughs> you're actually doing something. Okay, it's so good. that's why I, I, I like your business. So Thank be busy. You so. Okay, Thank you so we need more people like you that are busy. Oh, okay? thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank yeah. You. See, yeah. you have been here. This is our third time. Okay, but my <laughs> I have uh, I always have new 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 listeners. So please introduce yourself to my audience and tell them who you are, what you do. Wow. So um thank you very much. Um I, I like calling you Uncle Ekene because see, you're my, see, you're my, my, name, my name is Ekene. <laughs> yeah? Call me Ekene. Okay. Okay. For for for, for this for this session. Call for me this Ekene. session. Okay. So um Mr. Kenny, <laughs> Mr. Kenny. <laughs> so it, it's so good to be here. Um, yeah. And thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, for the audience, my name is David Oumi, and I'm privileged to be the founder of Salt House, Africa's first inclusion research institute. Um, and I work across, you know, different organizations as well. But my work revolves around inclusion particularly promoting a more coercive society, identifying marginalized communities and groups, um, and designing systems or intervention programs to reintegrate them into, into our, our, our society. Um, it's, it's so good to be here again, and um, hopefully in the course of the conversation, I know it's always an exciting conversation, yes. so <laughs> I really look forward to it. I look See, forward to it, so thank you I, so much. And, and, and I like the fact that um... You listen, okay. See, uh, the you. the acronym DEI inclusion. <laughs> I always enjoy. Our I know. I know. We, we talk about that, okay. <laughs> See those acronyms and the way they are being designed and yeah. implemented. I have I have issues with them, okay. Now, see, by asking these questions, somebody. Just by asking this question, someone might think, oh, you don't approve of inclusion. Mm. Or you don't, no, that's not it. See, I'm, I will tell you, I'm all, I'm all about inclusion. Okay. But you know, you know, you know, I, we talk about, we, we talk about this several times. Oh, so you know, my, you know, my, you know, my, you know, my, question about it. <laughs> yes, I and so. see i like the fact that you, you, are, you, are, you are listening you are willing to listen and yeah, yeah. so see uh, before we, we dig deep into that your festival okay uh sure. since you came you were here last time i will be about uh six months now 
or yes, more. Yes, yeah, wow, yeah. wow. You know, see, you have been doing a lot of work in the uh, source house. Okay, so see, tell my audience the new changes you guys have been implementing in that organization and the extent of yeah. the organization because i know i know you have expanded yeah. out of nigeria ghana and to other african countries yeah thank you thank you so very much for that um so i i think our salt house it, it's so good to be here and, and reflecting on it it's good to know that since the last time i would i, would, I you know i was on in this room we We've made tremendous progress, and it now it's not just now I'm reflecting. I'm like, wait, wait a minute, we've actually done some things. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, just for for the first time, listeners. So, Salt House is, um, like I said, it's we are a we are an organization committed to making inclusion work for yeah individuals, corporate organizations, and the government. We believe that inclusion is a panacea for development in Africa. Okay. And the more we are able to build inclusive systems, we will be able to accomplish sustainable development. So um, we, we saw that was founded in 2017, but we eventually go incorporated in 2018. So we are just over like about five years, five years. And six months ish. Um, and it's been it's been a remarkable, remarkable you know, journey looking thus far. And we, this year we, we had actually, actually had like two major agendas this year. The very first agenda that we had was to basically, so thus far we've been a non-governmental organization working closely with rural communities yeah. that have been marginalized. But we, we've we come to learn through the research that we've done that it's really important for us to also work with other stakeholders like businesses. You mm. know, so think of it as a, it's, it's a two-way street. One, we, we, we are either going to businesses and asking them to give us money, you know, to conduct an intervention project as part of their CSR, mm. right? You know, to include, to, you know, you give people food, clothes and all of those things and it, you think you've done something good. Or that's one, or you can actually go to businesses and help businesses understand the reason why they need to create more inclusive products and services, how they need to, why they need to create more inclusive recruitment policies, for example. Yeah. Um, and now that would actually lead to like a more sustaining, you know, development for, not just for the organization, but, but the whole society, yeah. For the whole society. Um, and so uh, what, one of the things that we decided to do this year was to launch uh, what we call Salt House Business, which is a um, Salt House Business is the arm of the organization that works with corporate organizations, yeah. um, both in Nigeria and, and you know, outside of Nigeria. But we, we focus on Africa, particularly. Uh, what we help these organizations do, we, we have three major goals. Um, when we, we, first of all, we try to help them understand the opportunities that exist by promoting inclusion across their policies, practices, and the delivery of their products and services. So, um, for example, you think about Nike, for example, I'm, I'm sure like about a decade ago, Nike never made, you know, hijabs for, for Muslim sport ladies. Mm. Uh, by simply creating that, identifying the role of inclusion in helping them expand the market, yeah. um, we've been able to create new products and services that include more people, you know, respect, you know, our differences in terms of disabilities, cultural differences, and that yeah. way be able to expand, you know, their their profit margin, you know, tremendously, which is great. So that's one thing that we are trying to help African businesses do. Um, the second thing that we are helping them do is to actually design what, what we call an inclusive workspace. So usually I get conversation, I have conversations with people and they say, oh, inclusion is a thing for the, you know, is a white man's thing, you know. <laughs> in Africa, do we need inclusion? You know, it's not like, and I'm like, well, that's what you think. Because um, usually when we talk about inclusion, we always restrict it to racial differences. Yes. But that is not what inclusion just entails. Exactly, exactly. It's, it scopes way beyond that. And looking at a, a continent like Africa, I always tell people, in Africa, we've got the population almost similar to that of China. Mm -hmm. And in China, we've, in China, we've got just 54 ethnic groups. Yeah. In Africa, we've got over 3,000. Over 3,000. We've got over, over 500. And so you notice that political ideologies and development tends to grow along, you know, along ethnic lines, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Just you go, just you go. Tribal lines, yes. Tribal, uh, tribal lines, exactly. Yes. Does yeah. that make sense? So, yeah. uh, as a result of that, what you now find 
that is if we don't build systems in put systems in place that actually recognize our differences and you know in such a way that we're able to work together and find what, what i would call common interests that's the de that's devoid of you know our religious oh, differences yeah. ethnic, and all of that we may not be able to advance as a people i agree so, I, I, I always, agree i always consider it to I always consider it to, you know, you, everyone being in a boat and some are paddling to move forward, others are paddling to move backwards. It's not that the boats will not move. The only thing is that the boat will capsize. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly physics, right? Uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we are trying to do with organizations is trying to help them build a more inclusive workspace where persons with disabilities, persons with different, you know, differences. I, I would just say that in, in Nigeria, everyone is a mm. victim of discrimination. One way or the yes, other. Yes, yes. From the person that is called Omona in the office, yes. or the person that is, you know, that simply because of the fact that she's got a child with an additional need, mm. she's considered to be lazy, you know, yeah. in the office. Everyone's a victim. And so not until we're able to build, you know, these in inclusive workspaces, will we be able to maximize the potential that every employee has to offer and everyone in society has to offer as well. So that's the second thing that we try to do with um, the um, South House Business Project. Yeah. And then finally, which is really, really important, it's behavioral change. So we conduct, mm. loads of, we conduct loads of trainings across different levels of the organization from the board to the um, executive staff and then to the operations, operation teams yeah. um, to help them understand what inclusion basically means and how it, how, how it actually applies to, to them. So at the top, how does it apply to the decision making, the policies, the strategies? At yeah. the bottom, how do you take note of that when you're recruiting someone? How do you take note of that when you are going out there to sell your products and services? You know, particularly with marketers, for example, you have conversation with some marketers and you find out that you, when you ask them, oh, this product that you have is, is amazing, but how, how, how are you able to market this product in such a way that someone who's got an auditory disability is able to find interest in it? And they'd be yeah. like, we don't really like why should we be bothered about i said that now that's the problem mm. now you're putting a product that could serve a particular customer segment but yeah. simply because of their their disabilities in court you are unconsciously sidelining them and that mm. way you are crippling so it's all about the behavioral changes we, we had we during because of our, our work we interviewed human resource managers yeah and in the survey, we found out like, oh, if you had the opportunity to recruit for a role and you had someone who has got a physical disability and, and another person who equally qualified um, as has not got a physical disability, who would you recruit? And they all said, oh, I'll recruit the person without a physical disability. Yeah, I, 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 know, I know that. Because, yeah, because yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you would ask why. I'm like, ah, what does it matter? It's, we just want to get the job done, right? And I'm like, um, but what if the other person who's got a physical disability has got more, you know, attention, longer attention span, more skilled in specialization and all of that. Yeah. Like, um, eventually we're able to find out that it's not that human resource personnel are, are evil in court or discriminating mm. in court. It's called unconscious bias. Yeah. And by unconscious bias, it's often fueled by ignorance, the lack of understanding of how to manage these situations. Yeah. So we know that if you, persons with disabilities or persons with additional needs, would require some form of care and assistance at work to be able to function effectively. Yeah. Now, most of our organizations, uh, businesses are not designed to, to do that. That's the truth. Cater for them, yes. That's cater for them. You, you, for example, take it as simple as a bank that everybody goes. Even if you yep. say you have a, a bank is where both the rich and the poor they meet. Mm. If you go to the bank, how often do we have disability toilets or restrooms in the bank? Yeah, uh, even even uh, you know? ad avenue to enter the bank if you are, if you are to enter the yeah. bank so yeah. you don't you don't have you know all of these allowances and and, and then the question that you you start to ask is how does this translate into your revenue how does this translate into the impression you give to society and so that's those are actually the three major things that we try to accomplish with salt house business um currently we are actually building plans to create what we call salt house governance and with salt house governance we actually will be working with government not just in Nigeria, but across Africa, okay. to review the bills, review um, emerging policies and laws, um, infrastructural projects, carry out equality impact assessments to identify those who could be marginalized by the implementation of certain policies that, that well, well, yes, they were designed to, to do good for the people, mm. but in a way you could actually be marginalizing others. Mm. And I'll give an example of one, one of them. 
Um, recently, we had a conversation about the new Nigerian um, Student Loan Act that was passed okay. this okay. year, which is a really interesting topic. And then I think for you to access access that one of the eligibility, you you should be able to first of all, your household income should be less than five hundred thousand naira per annum. And if you break that down, that's that goes to about say four hundred and eighty thousand per month and mm. forty. 48,000 per month. So the question I'm, I'm asking is, that's one red flag, 48,000 per month. Now, how many people who fall into that social class tend to yeah. get a job after university? Yeah, very many? few, very, very few. few. Secondly, we are asked, you, are, you are asked to, you're required to provide two guarantors and the guarantors must either be a civil servant from the <laughs> Level those, 12. Those, those people don't have that. <laughs> yeah, level 12. And asking them you either that or they get a lawyer with 10 years of experience or you get <laughs> a justice of peace. Or Now, the question is, if you've done your proper research, you find out that automatically you're signing the people who actually need these things. Need you, need you, yeah. We do research at Salt House. And when we go to rural communities, I can tell you for a fact that everyone, we, we, we think that economical, economic marginalization, that's where it stops. Mm. It also often transcends into geography. Yeah. When you oh, go yeah. to some of these, when you go to some of these communities, they don't know any rich person. The only rich man that they know is their governor. Yeah. And they are often not related to them. Yeah. And so what you will now find out at the end of the day is that there is this gap between the people you're trying to target and the people that you actually meet. And at the end of the day, like a friend of mine asked me, so who is this designed for? I said, well, it's designed for nobody. Because at the end of the day, there is no one. Those who have the people don't earn, don't have that, the money. that yeah. kind of money. They earn, yeah. Obviously, the household income is way beyond that, right? Yeah. And, and they have a different mindset about education. They've got an entirely different mindset about education. Yeah. And so these are these are actually some of the things that we all want to work with the government on um, moving, moving on. Um, See, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. See, yeah, I, sorry. I, I, I love the fact that you have expanded your reach see yeah. now yeah. now you are getting into the crux of inclusion uh, <laughs> okay it's, 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 very it's, it's, it's very interesting evolving. it's interesting yeah. very yeah. very interesting and yeah. i'm happy i'm happy you're, you're doing this i mean okay. when when we first met you were not doing this okay no now no. you're doing <laughs> this so i'm so 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 happy you know? thank you so see, much i'm thank so so much. happy but then you still have a long way to go oh yes oh yes okay? and, I, oh, and, yes. and i'm happy you understand this and you are willing to listen eh? yeah adapt yeah and move forward yeah okay? very very good very good so you were, you were you were about to say something esther before i cut it off sorry oh that. no no not at all not so <laughs> so what i was going to say was the second project that we had uh, which was really this was was we decided to launch the first ever inclusion festival in africa yeah. oh, oh very very good that that's yeah. something we need to talk about yes yeah and um we noticed that if we are going to talk about inclusion you know in the course of our work we've mm. identified some you know some remarkable individuals and organizations yeah that promoted you know some form of like coercive society that creates try to put systems in place that create fairness and equality for all irrespective yeah. of their gender disability or abilities um ethnicity and, and, and all the different protected characteristics that yeah. we have so the question is how do we promote inclusion by first of all recognizing these people how do we secondly bring everyone from different sectors together under the yeah. same roof to network learn share ideas and that was how the African Inclusion Awards was born. Uh, and that was the second major major project that we actually had this year. And it, it was remarkable when, when we started it. I, I honestly did not know at that time that it was the first. And then once someone said, oh, have you checked online to see if this has happened anywhere else in Africa? I was like, not only has it not happened anywhere else in Africa, it does not really happen anywhere else in the world. We have wow. awards in the world, but we don't have like an inclusion festival that brings people together of different, you know, um skills of different you know background and all that background together to learn and understand you know new research trends and all of that so those are actually the two major projects that we had this year and i'm really excited that as we're wrapping up the year you know it's it's it, we thank god it's been it's been an amazing very project. very good very good so about the the festival yeah tell, tell us more about it when is when is it happening 
where is it going to happen who are the invited uh, guests who are the awardees and all that tell us oh, how, great, how, great. everything yeah Okay, so um, actually the award was supposed to, when we designed it this year, it was supposed to take place in November, take place in November, that's from the 21st to the 23rd of November, just in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, but as a result of the post-election, you know, boas that's been going on in Nigeria, as Ooh, well as- yes, Nigeria, yes, yes. And all of that. So we, we didn't want to take chances with our, with, you know, with all of our plans. And so we had to procrastinate it and move it creatively okay. into two- 24. Ooh, now, okay. yeah, into 2024. So the way the award is designed is designed in such a way that we are recognizing 32, um, 23, um, you know, remarkable individuals and organizations. We have 32 speakers from 12 African countries that would be participating in the that's, conference. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually a three day program. So the first day is the conference where we will bring it together over a thousand young people who are passionate mm -hmm. and organizations who are passionate about inclusion. I want to create a more inclusive society. So they want to come learn, network, you know, and all of that. So that's the first day. The second day is a festival, which is an informal event. So we meet at the beach. We bring people for of different, you know, abilities. We're working closely with quite a number of marketable organizations and media houses yeah. to reach a wider group of people, bring people together so organizations can familiarize themselves, as well as government officials, familiarize themselves with different kinds of people that we have, different characteristics that we have in our society. Yeah. Um, I remember we were talking about the Nigerian, uh, if there was a, we, I saw that we have this thing called the inclusion dialogue that takes place every Friday. We already had one today. Um, it takes place every Friday at six o'clock, uh, West African time. And last week, the conversation for, for last week was if grading should be banned. And I, mm. I remember, yeah, I, okay. I remember someone, someone asked it, asked a question, a really remarkable question and said, that do, do we realize that when the um, Nigerian curriculum, last curriculum was updated, it was not, persons with disabilities were not taken, to, taken into consideration because the assessment criteria, the assessment, the way the syllabus was designed, it, it was not designed in such a way to access people based on their different needs. And I think that's where mainstream education comes into play. Mainstream education comes into play. We don't have that in Nigeria and in most parts of Africa. And so the question was, should do you think we should ban, ban you know, <laughs> create, create, uh, create a, a more inclusive way of assessing students and training students as well? Which is a real, remarkable topic, but I won't delve deep into that. But basically, what I, what I was just trying to say um, from all of this is just that we what we are trying to do through the in the second day is to bring people together and to familiarize themselves with the different groups that we have. Yeah. Government officials, come see and reevaluate your policies and your next policy review. Don't you think these people should be taken into consideration? And yeah. if so, how can we do it? Under the same roof, you get to meet people who are working remarkably, doing remarkable work around you know these different issues. And you can actually build networks with them and they can actually work with you to yeah. you know design policies. And then the third day is the award night, obviously, where we bring we actually bring it together like remarkable, you know, wonder. I've said remarkable a lot. Ah. <laughs> ah. But well, yeah. may, maybe because uh, we are doing remarkable work. Yeah, oh, no, I, try. I, try. <laughs> I, I try. I can only try. Thanks to my team, I can only try. So um, the third day is we have like wonderful speakers like um Rufai Oseni who um of Arise TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, he's one of our keynote speakers will be coming in to to talk to us about the role of media in promoting inclusion and equality but we'll also be bringing someone called mrs um crystal chibu um she's the ceo of um Iredi foundation so Iredi foundation they've got over a decade experience years of experience like working with amputees particularly yeah. those from disadvantaged families that may not be able to afford you know um accessibility equipment and you know technology mm. um yeah uh, also, we we'll, we we'll, we we'll also have um so it's uh, Mr. Alex Akibe of yeah. um, African Clean Up Initiative. Um, he also leads um a project called Recycle Pay, uh, mm -hmm. where it promotes like inclusive educational opportunities at, yeah. at the same time, um address and the environmental decadence in rural communities. Yeah, who, who tend, these people tend to be vict victims of you know the climate emergency. That's the truth about it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um. And so we are, we are inviting them as long as two other speakers that we are yet to confirm, but yeah. I, I won't disclose them. Mm -hmm. But what we are trying to do, we're trying to start um, a peaceful revolution. 
<laughs> See, when, when you when you mention revolution, I have, yeah, I have an issue there. Yeah, I know it's, it's a big revolution. And the revolution is one where it's one where over the years, um, in Africa's post-colonial and even colonial, you know, um, um era. Yeah. Our leaders have used our differences as weapons to divide us rather than mm -hmm. us, right. Um, a friend of mine would say in Africa, if even if we don't have mineral resources, we have culture, and culture well commercialized can bring tremendous growth because culture changes. And I was like, hmm, that makes sense. We've not we've not capitalized on that in Africa. And so why I call the work that we do at Salt House a peaceful revolution is because we are trying to create that consciousness in people that your difference or your uniqueness is mm -hmm. not a weapon for evil or is not a weapon mm -hmm. for for decade uh, for you know, environmental or for developmental stagnation as I, I, yeah. I could call it right but actually it's a tool that we can unnest to create more lasting solutions for you and I and so the question agreed agreed yeah. but and let so me the, let me oh Sorry, yeah. sorry, finish, finish, finish. Okay, I'll just, I'll just wrap up with this. Uh, but, but I think the goal for us now is the very first thing that we, we, we want to do is we have quite a number of initiatives. We have what one called the Beyond Borders Project. So the Beyond Borders Project is an anti-tribalism campaign where we work with elderly people as well as young people in universities and marketplaces. And if they, it's more like a fishbowl dialogue, we ask them questions around marriage, politics. For example, would you vote for a politician who is corrupt or is from your hometown, or vote for someone who is not from your hometown, and the person is not corrupt. You know, questions like that. And you'll be you'll yeah. be shocked. To, you'll be shocked to get you. You'll be shocked that at the responses that you get. I won't be. I won't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't be at and, all. And so, at the end of the day, like what we are trying to do is to help people understand that you know your, our ethnic differences don't really define define us or define our life chances what actually defines our life chances are we able to work together collectively to accomplish you know growth i always tell people inclusion has got benefits inclusion there's nothing sympathetic about inclusion if you think promoting an inclusive society is out of sympathy then you don't even understand what inclusion means and that's why recently we you know early this year we changed our mission statement from promoting inclusion to making inclusion work for because we believe that you know, it's got tremendous benefits if we're all honest. And the responsibility that we choose to take as an organization is to help people accomplish that period. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So um it's it's my hope that through the work that we are doing both at Africa, the Africa Inclusion Awards, at Salt House Business, as as well as our other projects that we are running, that we are able to instill in, in people, both the young and the old, the educated and the informal educator because i believe everyone is educated it's just a matter of yeah, you know yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. no <laughs> I, I, I agree on, yeah mm -hmm. on on how to you know on our differences and how those differences can be harnessed for collective prosperity how we can take our indigenous knowledge our cultural differences there are things that you do in your village your village that has worked for you guys over the years and that could be a problem in, 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 in the next village. Okay. Next town. But if you if we have that divide, we are not open to learn from your culture and learn from what has worked for you and adopt that. If that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. Um, those are actually some of the things that we are trying to accomplish. And we 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 hope that you know with good collaborations and you know audiences, we I, I believe that we will be able to do that. This is good. I, I will tell you uh I, I like I like this. I like what, you, what you're doing. Uh, you, and I like that it's you doing this. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> see, oh, see, no. I, I, will I will tell you. I will tell you. Yeah, please. <laughs> I, say that, I say that because you are, so far, so far, yeah. you are open-minded. Yeah. Okay? Thank so God. far, you are, oh, see, I'll tell you, I talk to a lot of young Africans. Hmm. I talk to a lot of young Africans. And most of us are not open-minded. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And once we hear anything that is, is strange to what I know, the first thing is no. It's a kick against it. Yeah. They will start That's kicking true. against it. 
yeah. even before you finish what you are saying. Yeah, yeah. true. True, okay. sir. You start kicking against it. <laughs> uh, and see, like, it's, uh, like you mentioned, Africa has over 3,000 ethnic tribes. Yeah. Okay? See, the truth of the matter is this. So, okay, right now, I don't know how many tribes Europe has currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't, I, I, I don't know. But I will tell you, they used to have more tribes. Okay? Mm. Now, it took them 2,000 years mm. of fighting each other. Eh? See, the fights, the wars that human beings have been waging against each other. Yeah. Is a, is a, it was a tool and it's still a tool mm. of integration. Unfortunately, it's a stupid <laughs> kind of tool. But, but that, that's what he does. Because, yeah. because when a bigger, bigger town fights a smaller town mm. and defeat them, what do they do? They integ integrate the people of a smaller town by maybe making them slaves mm. okay and then through years they 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 go from slave to servants and then part of the society mm. that's that's what happens yeah. unfortunately it's barbaric and it takes a long time yeah okay now i will tell you this is why when I hear all these things about colonialism, mm -hmm. about just drawing borders, blah blah blah, I I struck my I I struck my head because I said to myself, "What if? Mm. Okay, what if didn't that didn't happen? What would we be doing right now?" Mm. I, I'm telling you, my brother. See, look at it. Look at what has happened in other places in the world. Mm. Okay. And people say, oh, Africa has been always been united. I said, really? See, unfortunately, because we don't have written accounts of our history. Sadly, sadly. That's why young Africans think we're all dancing together Jolly, jolly fun, jolly. What was the word? Doing jollof, eh? Dancing <laughs> with each other. No, <laughs> we were not doing that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, creating these borders, putting up to mm. three hundred uh, tribes in Nigeria and mm -hmm. call them one name. Yeah. Now. Yes, we are still we are still fighting each other, but but not not violently. Mm. See, we need to understand these things. Okay, we really need to understand. See, the more you understand human nature, okay, and you accept it, mm. the, the better, the, the easier it will be for you to adjust it and make it better yeah once you you refuse to understand human nature that this is what we do if you leave us alone by ourselves mm. this is what we will do okay until mm. you on we understand that okay this is what we do yeah so it's now it will now give you more more leverage yeah. to Mold it Accordingly. gradually. Mold yeah. it. See, there's no, there's no instant uh, success in this in this thing. Yeah, we need to mold it things gently, gently, gently. Yeah. Okay. If you come today and say uh, all of you are this, <laughs> they, they, will, they will revolt. Yeah they will revolt because what you're asking them to do is to abandon the identity yeah. 
that they have, they will say no. Yep. Okay. So it's it's good. It's good for us to understand these things. Well, I th of, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I really like I really like what you, what you said about acceptance, which is one of like the major the major a major component of of inclusion. Mm. Or rather than me saying inclusion, why don't I say avoiding marginalization? Does mm. that make sense? Well, uh, see, see, see. Now, do yeah. we want to avoid marginalization? Marginalization? Yes. Yeah, we do. But see, human beings, unfortunately. Human beings are, are not like that. See, I would, I would, I would like you to read uh, the Mokab Mokadema by Ibn Khaldun. See, mm. he's, he's said to be the first so sociologist. Okay, he in the in the in the fourteenth century. Okay, he was a Tunisian. Well, what were the the empire in, in those days? He was he was a very a, a great scholar and a government official. Okay, mm. he worked with from from Tunisia to Egypt. Okay, so read him, the Moka, the Mokadema. See in that in that book, it talks about Asabia. It's a concept that tribes, right? Different yeah. tribes like people, members of a tribe like people like them, and they mm -hmm. fight other tribes. Yeah. Okay. That that was North Africa. Mm -hmm. So the 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 Africans who tell you that uh, Africans have always been working together, mm -hmm. that will tell you what what will happen in those days. And and all those people were all Muslims. And mm. they were they were fighting each other. <laughs> mm. So that would tell you what was happening in sub-Saharan Africa with the, the tribes who are maybe virtual enemies of each other. By the time the colonial uh, the colonialists came, Egba and Egbadu, both. Town, both regions in Ogo State were, were enemies. Ijebu and Egba were enemies. Mm. Okay. And they both spoke the same they language. They speak <laughs> And I think, I think there is... Or, or, your, or your empire and, uh, and uh, the, the women. Yeah. <laughs> True. True. The other so, And I think at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like there's this saying that people, humans, would accept as much as much inequality as what favors them. Yeah. Um, it's I, I don't know if if it's if it's behavioral psychology, but humans tend to form affiliations. Yeah. Because it's believed that the more the stronger our voices, the more we are, the stronger our voices, and the more we would have. And so, when in a place of scarcity, where there is not enough to go around. The next thing humans, we have a proclivity to want to identify people who are just like us in such a way that we form the larger number. So if at that point in time, religion is not what makes us form the larger number, mm -hmm. if it's our ethnicity, if it's our gender, we will. Yeah. We would form those affiliations for dominance. Uh, and I think, but not but, and what inclusion actually tries to do is, which at the end of the day, like accomplishing inclusion, it it, it does not is I don't think it's isolated. Because if if at the end of the day we don't have you know enough opportunities for everyone, how then are we able to be how will, then are we able to make inclusion work? Because humans have the tendency to you know form these affiliations to survive. Yeah, that, and that, so the, that's the, true. the question now is how do we design our inclusion our inclusive intervention? In such a way that when there is, we've got scarce resources, we're able to leverage you know basic research theories like the veil of ignorance and all of that to ensure that yes there are scarce resources, but we we'll make sure that there are no agencies that are abused. You know we don't have government government officials who are taking advantage of the situation, and then you know corruption definitely creeps in, cripples in, and and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So um yeah. 
the the truth of the matter is this uh, uh i will say this yeah uh opportunities may be scarce mm -hmm. but are not limited yeah okay now we don't maybe we haven't discovered this that particular opportunity but it's there looking at you waiting for someone yeah to discover it True. okay so True. see the thing is that we part of the work i do is to help young people open their minds because yeah. until until we open our minds yeah the opportunity staring us in the face will be there for a thousand years and we will not see it i mean hey uh gravity gravity mm -hmm. has always been on on this planet hmm? yeah and it took uh somebody five five hundred five hundred no five hundred years ago yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it has always been there. <laughs> so, see, until we open our minds, we will not see the opportunities around us. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, in truth, in truth, in the truth of, of my matter is this: uh, science has been uh, the the revolutionary uh, catalyst. Mm. Okay. the last few hundred years so for africa to open a vast array of opportunities yeah we need we need our youths to get involved in science not only uh, practical science to be thinking in a scientific way yeah. Okay. So education is is the key. Education is the key. Unfortunately, education costs money. And uh for for some reason, some politici politicians are not interested in investing in education. Mm. Okay. So that's that's some or some issues that are political okay and you are my you and i do not have the uh, <laughs> gravitas to to make that happen okay uh, but, 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 but we still have some things we can do yeah okay for me uh it's about uh, a one-on-one -on -one thing okay and uh, very soon it will be one to hundreds or uh, one to <laughs> thousands. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. So eventually. see about 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 DEI, uh, yeah. like I like like I mentioned earlier, I'm all about inclusion. Do you know what yoga means? Yoga. Yes. Except if the yoga I know. The, yes. Yeah. There's, there's only one yoga. Although, okay. although the, the, I, I, well, I didn't know if you meant an acronym or something. <laughs> no, no, yoga. Yeah, yoga. I know what yoga means. Yeah, the, the practice of yoga. What, yeah. What does it mean? I think it also it involves like muscle flex. Um, okay. at, at the same time, meditation. Okay. That, that's okay. Yo yoga. The word yoga means union. 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 Oh wow! Okay, I Ooh, didn't know that. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. See, see, because because much. because in the West, in the West, all they know about yoga is uh, the exercise yeah. portion. That's just one, yeah, just one <laughs> small Aspect. area of yoga. Mm. Okay? Yoga means union, okay? so it involves everything. Yeah. Okay. So it includes everything. So anyone who practice practice yoga is practicing union of mm. everything. Inclusion. Mm. Okay. So see people who actually practice yoga, 
uh, uh, maybe the practitioners of uh, inclusion, okay? Because they, in, they include everything in their space. People, tables, everything. Mm. Okay, so I'm 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 taking you out of out of the, out of the your your realm into the into the into the deeper you know yes the... it's it's <laughs> yeah okay anyway so see my my issue my issue with the eye is that uh, yeah it, for me it it has been po politicized in the West mm. okay and like you mentioned earlier uh, in the West. When you talk about uh, diversity, one of one of the areas they go first to is color. Color, yeah. And 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 the way the way they do it, they demonize a section to to praise another section. It's not inclusion. Mm. Okay, so see. Africa being so diverse, we don't want to do anything like this. Okay, we don't want to. We don't want to adopt any practice like I've seen in, in the West. Otherwise, it will it will actually separate people. Mm. Okay, so we, we actually want practices that will include people rather than. Make uh, tell these people, oh, you were you were wicked two thousand years ago. <laughs> you, were, you were you were killing people of my of my tribe. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. What see for me? What is gone? What happened in, in the past is in the past. Okay, we can you can know you can know about it just for information to make sure it doesn't happen again. Mm. Huh? We cannot use it to demonize the the tribe that were on top back then to tell them, okay, this time around you need to be under. Na na na. Mm. Okay, so say so that's that's something that we should make sure it doesn't happen. And see, I don't know if, if if I talk to you about it, equality. See, in the truth, in truth. Equality is a is a human uh, uh, desire. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes, it's a good one. Okay, but we mo it mo we need to understand that uh, in the natural world, there's no such thing as equality. There's not see. There's not e there's yeah, nothing e yeah, equal. Yeah, there is yeah. nothing equal in the world. But, but which is which is why we emphasize more of equity. Um, over equality. Yeah, because okay. Yeah, you may, you may, you're talking about that. I've, I've, I'm sure I must have mentioned that. Yes. In, in this case, in our private now, now, see, e equality is easy to implement because, see, equality is... Okay. okay. Equality is this. You give everybody the same opportunity. But that, that does not make everyone equal, does it? You, you See, the first thing I said, there's nothing as equal equal yeah. in the world. Yeah. There's no there's no way you make everybody equal. Yeah. But if you give everybody opportunity, yeah. then different people will take that opportunity to the highest level they can. Yeah. And and that's in they, they've all got different capabilities. Exactly. So the question that you, you that often comes up is when we say equal access to education, mm. which is great, does that end? At ensuring that everyone is everyone's in the classroom. Okay. Now I, you know, and, and I, I, also, I, get, I get that. I get that. Okay. So let's let's use education in Nigeria, for example. Okay. Mm. For me, for me, everybody in Nigeria, every youth in Nigeria must have access to 12 years of schooling. Mm. 12 years of schooling. And my, 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 my proposal is that, see, the school, part of schooling is breakfast and lunch. Mm. Okay? So 
if your parents are so poor that they can't feed you, you get to school in the morning and you drink tea and some biscuits or bread, whatever. Okay? And so that you are able to sit down in class and study. Okay? By by one, you have lunch. So at least every day, every day, no matter how poor your parents are, you have two meals. Yeah. Every day. Okay? Now, Right now, I'm sure in, in Nigeria that there, there are children that that struggle to have one meal a day. Okay, if you are they are in school and the schools, as part of the school uh, as schooling, they are given two meals. Okay, at least they will survive no. till the third, the the age of eighteen, nineteen. Okay, and with twelve years of schooling. They can go and work. Yeah. Okay. So we are giving everybody that opportunity. Yeah. Now, how they take it, how they take it will be will will be uh, determined by their own cap- capabilities. Yeah. Which which you would also admit are different. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. They are different. Everybody is different. Yeah. Okay. But we have given everybody the opportunity. Yeah. Okay. See, that's the that's for me. For me, that is the 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 highest thing we can do to bring everybody to a standard. Yeah. We cannot we cannot continue doing further than that. We can only See, but we, we can give scholarship for university and beyond yeah. for the the most talented. And the only reason why they get that is because they are the most talented. Now, yeah. we, see, if we do our schooling properly, in the 12 years of schooling, we, we can have carpentry, Metal works, whatever, so that people people who are inclined mm. to do that, by the time they get to year ten, okay, maybe they will they will be doing they will be doing more of those things. Yeah, if they are not if they are, if they are not ed- uh, academically inclined, okay, so. Uh, so we, we cannot we cannot we cannot make everybody the same. No, and I, I, I always make reference to to what an example that a wise man told me, which I was mm. <laughs> <laughs> because simply because we talk about inclusion, does that mean that when you're playing basketball, you reduce the height of the rim? Exactly for, for everyone. Uh, and and so at the end of the day, inclusion is not or equality is not just about. And there's, there's 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 this article I'm working on called when inclusion goes wrong and when equality goes wrong, and uh, we expect that we somehow believe that oh by creating giving everyone fair opportunity, you know ensuring that when people people have access to schools that we have done good, maybe we could even be creating a more precarious situation. Okay, tell me tell me how. So for example, um, we talk about rural communities not having access to. Mm-hmm quality education and all of that. And schools are built. Teachers are provided. And these kids have access to free education. But are these, you know, learning practices and techniques tailored to the differences of these people? In places such as Northern Nigeria, where, the, you know, the Islamic education is actually prioritized, which I don't see anything wrong, wrong with. And then you, we, we are basically trying to enforce or reinforce westernized education to replace, no, not complement or, you know, supplement, to replace a long-standing tradition of education, educational tradition. I think that's that's a problem in itself. Okay, let me let me let me let me ask you this question. And, and so, okay. let me ask you this question. Yeah. What is westernized education? 
Westernized education basically revolves around STEAM. That's science, technology, engineering. Okay. Okay. Math, okay. Right? Let me tell and, you. Let me tell. Let me tell you this. Yep. Yeah. Before the West became the gurus of science. Yeah. Science. The best scientists were in Africa. No, 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 no. Oh. Were, were Arabs or were Islamic in Baghdad. Okay. That's okay. that's new. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so see, science is not Western. Science actually started in Greece, mm. and the the Islamic scholars learned mm. learned by reading the books that the Greeks wrote, mm. and they started experimenting. Okay, the first the first book on of on optics was written by a an Islamic scholar. Okay, and that's what the Europeans took. Okay, so see, science, eh, is not is not is not Western. <laughs> and, and I think that what that what that now goes what that goes on to do, to Ma do mat mathematics, mathematics. Western. Okay, Ar Ara what we call Arabic numeral. Yeah, that came from India to uh, the the. Mm the Islamic uh, uh, empires. Yeah. And that's what we use today. It's not Western. It's mm. India, Islam. Before... Well, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I, think some, I, I think that goes on to, to say, to, to, to point out something that I think subconsciously, I think we are still riding on the, on the colonial mindset. Mm. Um, yesterday, a friend of mine was talking about Mongo Park discovering the river, river now, <laughs> and, and I was like, Oh, that's incredible to know that the river now appeared when Mongo Park arrived. No, no, see, see, you know, the, 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 po the point is this, uh, of course, Mongo Park, people have, have always been, been using the river, mm -hmm. okay, but but Mongo Park actually tr traveled. Through the the from from uh was the the mountain uh in uh in uh, Mali, all through to the to the to the Niger Delta, he went through the whole journey. Okay, he didn't discover in the in the mm -hmm. sense that he discovered that nobody knew. It. No, nobody. That's not true. That's exactly. not true at all. And I and and what I was trying to point out was what I said as well. Often we always call it westernized education, yeah. But really, you have been able to like point out the fact that what we call westernized education, we just refer to it as that because of the colonial what happened during yeah, colonization. Because, because that that's how we 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 met, we, we find it. We okay. found it exactly. But see, see, education and, and, yeah. is a is a is a human thing. Okay, it goes from this this these people to these people to these people. This right now, it came from the west, maybe. If Africans do what they, they're supposed to do, maybe in the next uh, three centuries, people will start talking about uh, what what Africa gave to the world. Yeah, that's that's in correct. Fact, at, the, at the beginning, uh, the Greeks the Greeks learned a lot of things from Egypt. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. see, let's leave this thing about oh the West. No, when yeah. it comes to education. Is human education? Yeah, but okay. You see inclusion. You see, well, which which again does not go without without recognizing the fact that I loved with what you said, the example that you gave about yeah, in three centuries probably Africa would have been able to add something to the body of knowledge, yeah, and then would give that to the world, and then it would be known as oh. This is education from Africa. Africa, that, yeah, exactly. That point in time. That's because we have been credited with improving the body of knowledge. Yeah. And, and when we call it Westernized education, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are crediting all, all of knowledge to the West in reality. Yeah. I know a, a part of it is just the colonial mindset, mm. but also it's because they brought it because they improved on it. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. when we talk about like creating like, when like going back to what I was talking about, like, the fact that you promote equality doesn't necessarily mean that you're solving a problem 
mm -hmm. might even be creating a worse, worse problem. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like who defines what should be equal? Who defines what should be shared? Exactly. Who defines, who defines how that should be shared? Who defines who deserves what and who, who needs what? Exactly. Who defines that? So, and, and that that's why people people like me say we we don't we don't do anything like this. Just give mm -hmm. everybody the same opportunity and yeah. let each each of us take it the way we want to take it. Yeah, but also if you say giving the same opportunity, that could also that could also be a setback in itself. How? Because How? yeah, because by saying the same opportunity. Mm. For example, think of it this way: you you you're giving about ten billion dollars in, in yeah. development aid, and you're asked to use that to develop, you know, your own country. How will you distribute that aid? Would you distribute it to all the states and all the local governments equally, or would you, you know, distribute it, give more resources to those who have been discriminated or those people no, who see, have had no access to? See, no, no, so no, there are different schools of thought. There are no yes. right or wrong answers mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. at this point. Some people would say, Oh, it's best to you know put the money in economies that are already booming, in cities that are already doing well, like Lagos, Port Harcourt, and all of that. So there's a school of thought that says that focus okay. invest more in places that have like an ongoing productive capability, okay, which makes total sense. But yeah. at the end of the day, by doing that. Don't you think that you are also creating some form of lack in, in some other? Okay, um, and this is so, this is this is where we need to be smart people. Okay, now okay. if if we do the do our proper analysis, mm -hmm. and we say see this, this is where we talk about uh, low low hanging hanging fr fruits. Yeah, low hanging fruits. Yeah. Good. Now, if we we'll give that funds to cities that are already thriving, okay? Now, and they do more, would they now put some money in the government in terms of taxes, okay? Mm -hmm. That will now allow those, the government to use that those taxes for the yeah. other areas, okay? Yeah. If this is about government policy policies, okay? Now, if we calculate, do the analysis, I will know, okay, if we put this money in those already thriving cities, states, uh, they will now generate social amount of re revenue, tax re revenue, that will allow us in five years, 10 years, to now improve other areas. Mm. Okay? Now, or compared, if we put that money in the areas that are, not thriving would those areas would that money allow those people to rise up to the to the extent that they will they will be able to they will be helped if the mm. the the thriving cities so it depends so yeah, it, it, see, it, the, the analysis is what, what we should be doing yeah so see, this is are this is are not too hard, but not too easy, okay? Well, but, yeah. <sighs> but we, we see we need to we need to do proper analysis all the time. Yeah. See, the truth of matter is this: uh, nothing, nothing is easy. Nothing is in one. Not see human 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 uh, decisions are not foolproof. Okay? Yeah. As long as we we do adequate analysis and we don't we don't share resources deliberately in a manner to to exclude one set of people to the benefit of one set of people. Yeah. Okay. As long as we don't do that deliberately, hey. Is okay for me. Mm. <laughs> mm. As long as you don't do that deliberately, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, mm. it's okay. As long as hey, we are doing the best we can. Okay. If see, if we are we are actually doing the best we can, in in a short space of time, everybody will be served. Yeah. Okay. 
the reason why everybody is not is not has not been served in in Nigeria, for example, in the last 40 years, is that we we have not done the best we can without uh, politicizing things according to tribal lines, tribal lines. Yeah. We have not done that. In fact, the enemies of any tribe are the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, are the, I look forward, I look are, the, are, the, are the intellectuals, politicians mm. of that tribe. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's, that's stereotyping in a way, but... <laughs> yeah, well, see, see, see I, I will tell you, I'm Igbo, okay? <laughs> but yeah. The, 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 the enemies of the Igbos, of the ordinary Igbos, are the 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 politicians of yeah okay sure. so hey let's leave let's leave the politics <laughs> <laughs> well it's really good it's, i really enjoy i really enjoy when we have this critical critical analysis about what inclusion means and what particularly what it means for africa because what inclusion means like you know living in the uk uh, and learning about inclusion it's entirely different yeah, it's entirely different. But back home in Africa, while I know it's really integral, I I think I encourage as much as possible not to do the copy and paste model um, with what's going on in other parts yeah. of the world. Yeah, it should be tailored to our local context and our local needs. Um, to an extent, there are days when we need to have conversations about inclusion, and there are days when we need to have conversations about justice. There are days when inclusion will not matter as much as justice will. And there are days when justice will not matter as much as inclusion will. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's dynamics. It's it's yeah. dynamic. So um, that 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 being that being said, I think I think which is which is why we have like platform. I really love platforms as you all that give people an opportunity to like you know to critique their ideologies, especially what they're proposing to to um to the continent. It's not just about thinking big. It's not just about you know, come to talk about the work that you do. No, or basically yeah. Com or coming on board to critique, you know, your approach to development in Africa, critique your approach to your intervention in Africa, yeah. and which is why I always love coming on the program. So Good. thank you. Thank, really thank you so much for, for this. You're welcome, you. man. So, David, see, the last time you were here, uh, yeah. I haven't added this this uh, question. Uh, <laughs> oh, you had a question from last oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I see. <laughs> I, I now ask I now ask my 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 guest to okay. recommend five books to my audience. Oh yeah. See, I see me, I, I I love reading. <laughs> I love reading. Okay. And see, like um, I said, see okay. education. Education is the is the number one thing we need. And hmm. for me, yes, uh, I recommend 12 years of schooling for for people like us. Uh we need to continue uh, educating Very ourselves, important. okay? Very so important. reading books, reading books. Let me just let me just say this. Yeah, I I was uh, on Facebook some months ago. Yeah, uh, a lovely lady. Uh, I I can't remember who she is, but she was she's supposed to be one giant of the continent. Uh, mm. And the, the video is old, was old, okay? She was talking about us being asked to read certain books, okay, by our colonial masters. And uh, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, the point, my point is this. Hmm. People started commenting that, oh, uh, the colonial masters asked to, asked to read certain books that we don't... Okay, the colonial masters are gone. Okay, now you can decide what books to read. Pick pick up those books, read them. Yeah, and you know what? I got lambasted. That why am I am I recommending Africans to read books written by? people from the West. Mm. For me, it doesn't make sense. We, yeah, it say, doesn't. we say the West is trying to 
Let me yeah. use the word marginal, marginal, marginalize us. Okay. Mm. If you think they are trying to teach us things that are not relevant to us, yeah. Don't read, don't listen to them. But if you want to learn what they know, what yeah. they know, read, of course the, books, you have to listen to read the books that they read. They read, yeah. 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 If 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 we refuse to read the books that they read, yeah, then we will not know what they know. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, that's that that's a really a really you know <laughs> yeah yeah if you want to know what they know read okay. the books they read okay so please recommend five books so the the, the very first book um I, I think i would like to recommend uh, i'm going to recommend two books um no, I, I, be, I want five. Well, no, I, it's going to be five. I'm going to okay. recommend. What I was going to say, I'm going to recommend two books around in, inclusion. And oh, quality. very, very good. That's that's your that's your domain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the very very first one is um, building palaces for people. Okay. Who? Yeah. What What uh, is that about? Oh, so building palaces for people focuses on how you know marginalization in courts, how the role of social capital in driving or promoting discrimination. Okay. Or and the author actually made reference to um there was a heat wave that happened in the 1970s in chicago mm -hmm. and then those people they at the end of the day they, i think the death toll was about a, a thousand a thousand wow. seven hundred or so but if larger fraction of those people were that who, 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 who lost their lives were from you know on the south on the south community mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so the the, the writer started to investigate like why is it that more people passed on it was the same thing that happened to everyone yeah why is it that those people who live in those club in those on the Ex South excellent people, question yeah uh, actually suffer the most and then in in the course of his um you know his investigation i think it was by eric um eric clinic clinic something like that yeah um in the course of his investigation he discovered that one of the major issues is what he calls social infrastructure. Now, with social infrastructure, when you go to the rich, the rich boroughs and you know the wealthy parts of, you they have more, they had more spaces that created, they had more, which is which was quite the discovery was quite unlikely. I probably would not have thought about that, and most people would would agree that it's shocking. When you read the book, you'll find out it's shocking. In most of these communities in the rich boroughs, they have like what they call social spaces where mm -hmm. different people are allowed to come out. Of their environment and then integrate you know kids are allowed to come and play and so that way they were able to build this form of like a bond yeah right and so when that event happened the question when he interviewed he, he found out that people were it was very easy for people to call for help mm, mm, mm. And, and, and help came you know compared to in those um on the south community they lacked social spaces they didn't have like public spaces where people integrated so everyone yeah. was cramped up in their own in their own places. houses oh my god their own houses and so you live in those kind of places where there's something going on in the next scene and you don't nobody know knows it. you don't know and so because of that there were so many people who, who actually lost their lives in their houses houses wow wow so yeah. as a result of that that was like a shocking discovery and i was like wait a minute and then he now goes on to talk about but if you now think about it, most developing part of the world, and if you take it back to like what we have, if you think about developing part of parts of, of the world, the reason why we have so much, so much uh, stagnation or I, I record of developmental stagnation is because we actually lack social spaces. Bring people out, network, because by networking and, and discussing that they actually get to form bonds and it's those bonds that go on to be transformed to any other form of capital that we, we yep. can actually think of. So um, yeah. So that's one book I I strongly recommend. Very good. The second good. book I, I would I would strongly recommend is is a book I'm reading currently. Okay. Um, about it, the economics of inequality. I have it just ah, here. Okay. So the economics of inequality is by Thomas 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 Piketty. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. I, I have I have a I have a capital. You have capital. Capital, he, capital like that that he published uh, four years ago. Okay. By the same author. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great, great, great. Yeah, check it, so check it out. I have this, it on my, is, my shelf there. Yeah. Oh, great. This is this is actually a very, it's a really, really incredible book. Yeah. And it's, so, yeah, I think it's, it's it's similar to a book I'm, I'm actually working on um, called Who's Fault? Who's okay. Fault? Where we, we're actually trying to, it's usually... What, what, what is the, is, is the title called? 
this is the economics of inequality okay the economics of inequality yeah. no like, I, I i don't I, for your, your for example, whatever is uh is making it blurry i can't see it. oh okay i'm so sorry about that no no but yeah <laughs> so it's similar to the book i'm trying to work on we just talked okay. about the protection of um of marginalization whose fault it is so yes we discriminate against a particular group and we always want to blame it to some eventuality but whether if you interview who you who you you are portion blame to they would always put the blame on someone else and then at the mm. end of the day we're actually trying to carry out the research to find out what's what exactly are the underlying cause of this transferred yeah. you know um 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 discrimination yeah. causes or whatever the case may be so th this is a wonderful book that i would strongly recommend as well. very good now so that's for inclusion Okay. Um, for um one one book I really I really enjoy reading, which I'm sure most people it's by the same author, is Built to Last. I recommend Built to Last for every person who wants by, to by Thomas? No, not by Thomas. By who? Built to Last is not by Thomas. It was by two authors, the same author of um Good to Great. Have you heard about Good to oh, Great? I I heard about it. Jim well, Collins. I, I haven't read it. Okay. So by it's actually by Jim Collin. Okay. Yeah, and um, Build to Last actually helps people understand how to build timeless organizations, particularly in, Af in Africa. Yeah, in Africa, yeah, we, we, we need we need those that, things because uh, yeah, we, we we're just starting you know, actually. Yeah, yeah, you know, we 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 often focus on on creating businesses rather than creating systems. And what the what the book has actually taught taught me was, and which has played a huge role in how we are evolving as an organization mm -hmm. and every other organization I'm fortunate to be a part of, is what how do we change our mindset from being an organization in society doing something to being a system that can be trusted being Very part good. of us being part and parcel of our human evolution so it's such that in a million years are we sure that if the world still exists mm. are we sure that we will still be playing an integral role fulfilling that same mission as yeah. a system and so that's basically what built to last actually actually okay. does, which okay. is a really fantastic wonderful good. wonderful book. good good Another book um, I would like to encourage people to read is um, a book about um, the richest man in Babylon. I'm not oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cl Clesson. A yeah, habit of, exactly. a habit of, of, of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I, 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 bought, I bought copies for my older, older daughters. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, wow. a, very, it's a very good, in, interesting story like interesting, book. Interesting yeah. story like book. Interesting. And I remember back when I first read it in, when I was at uni, my first degree. Quite okay. a number of years ago, uh, I nicknamed myself Akkad because Akkad was the character in the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the, he was the richest man in Babylon, and he gave about ten rules about what what to do. And I really encourage I really encourage people. Because oh yeah, it's, I, it's, I, 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 I love it's that fantastic. To social impact. Yeah, it's a really great book. I believe that as young people, we should also be financially intelligent to a great yeah. degree. Um, no matter how good, no matter the good you want to do in the world, you need resources. Without to money, nothing. Without money, it will be hard for you to. Okay. And so, yeah, often people say, oh, why do you want to become rich? I say, well, I want to become rich so that when I want to do good for my people, I don't have to You do like, it. Exactly. People. You know, yeah. I can just go on and do do it without asking yeah. so many yeah. questions, right? Uh, and I think that's, that's actually a mindset that I, most Africans should have. So, yeah as much as possible to read that book it's wonderful and then the last book i would advise that you should read is 12 lessons about life by jordan peterson oh I, it's um, also rules. here yeah 12 rules for life oh, yeah, life yeah my diary yeah in my bookshop very very good <laughs> very good i have yeah. my, my, my here and uh, <laughs> great and this book is it's an amazing book so this I, what, what actually intrigued me about this book is i, I actually started listening to jordan peterson about some years ago when okay. his, his controversial interviews, always crying, you know, while talking about life. And yeah, like, yeah. Who, see, see, he, he's an man? emotional <laughs> person. See? Yeah, like, who is he? Like, who is he? And then you get to find out from this book that, you know, life is not is not entirely fair. Yeah. But the fact that life is not fair doesn't mean that you can be, disad you should be disadvantaged. Does that yeah. make sense? And so it, the book actually teaches me particularly how to transform the things that happen in my realities. Mm. How do I transform them to tools that can help me transform those ideas that I have into concrete solutions for people? If that makes sense. So that's basically what this book teaches. And 
the the actually like my my top reads for 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 now and I'm, I'm very happy i'm i'm very happy that you have that book it's, oh yes it's yeah, fantastic it's a wonderful book it's a wonderful yeah. book, yeah. It's a wonderful yeah. book. Yeah. It's a wonderful book. And I, I would recommend this book for you. Okay. Please. Uh, Please. It's always, it's always uh, a privilege. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's from my favorite author right now. See, okay. I don't see him as, a, as an author. Okay. I just see him as... See, I don't, did I talk to you about him? Uh, Tomoso? Yeah? No, yes, you did. Yes, oh, good, you did. Yes, good, you did. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. Migration and culture. Yeah. Okay. Migration and cultures. See, mm -hmm. I you are interested in 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 in, in inclusion. That's a do domain. <laughs> Migration and cultures. Will, yeah. At least you 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 will learn something about people moving. Okay. Yeah. People move from your place and move to some, somewhere else. You encounter different circumstances. Yeah. And. He, he, uh, in, that, in that book, you think, learn that there are certain people, okay, yeah. go around the world and they're doing the same thing all over the world. Yeah. 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 And, I think and now how, 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 easy, how easy it is to, to, to be included in the society and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to get that book because it, I feel it should complement a book I actually got and I read, which, which is a really great book. It's called The Age of Migration. Okay. Which I'm going to look for somewhere. Yeah, that's it. This is it. Ah, it's, okay. called yeah. the, oh. it's called The Age of Migration. And it's a really great book. It's who's a the, wonderful who's the author? book. Um, Stephen Castles and Mark Okay. And okay. Mark Mueller, sorry. Um, it's a really good book. It's a really good book. And it, the, what the book actually talks about was how how um, different populations, as a result of several things that are happening from war to climate change, mm. people tend to move across. But yeah. by, by moving across, they actually take something with them. And it, it reminds me of um, when I was in secondary school, there's a form of, um, of uh, this thing, what, what's it called? Not cross-pollination, where wind blows seeds. Yeah. Then those seeds go somewhere else and then they they you know, they, they germinate and they yeah. become a plant and become a tree. And you wonder, oh, why, why was this thing growing here? It was the wind. And that's basically what these books talk about. Exactly. As people move around, people take value, their culture, and then wherever they go, they get to implement that. Exactly. Exactly. So I exactly. think that what you, what you said is a book that I would love to read. To yeah. Complement. Yeah. So, and that, that book is, see, he wrote that book. He was, he wanted to write on book, but by the time hmm. The manuscript was so big, he had to yeah. divide into into three books. So, uh, uh, migration and culture was one, yeah. conquest and uh, conquest and ooh, I, I can't I can't remember the, the books are there. I I will check them. Oh yeah, I will tell you. But oh, please, I will the, the, yeah, I, and the third one is uh, race and culture. Race and culture. Yeah. So I look forward so, to that. Yeah, hey, books, would you permit me to add two more books? Yeah, of course. Yeah, please. So one of my <laughs> one of my favorite one of my favorite social, one of my favorite social scientists. His name is um he is 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 a blessed memory now, and his name is Amatia Sen. So okay. Amatia Sen, and he wrote a book called The Idea of Justice. Okay. And development as freedom. Now those books are remarkable books, and that's okay. where I actually got the idea of if you're giving resources to distribute to the people, how do you mm. do it? Mm. Is it through utilitarianism, which is Ensuring that as long as we get the most benefits, yeah. that's that's what that's the right way to do it. Or do you identify those people who are disadvantaged, or do you do the veil of ignorance where you don't care whether you're rich or you're poor, you're uh, uh, everyone, it's there, go get mm. it, right? How do you approach it? And, yeah. and that book actually talked about, and also development as freedom talks about how by empowering people with the freedom to first of all identify their talents, develop those talents, and then the freedom. To implement, transform those talents into value for their local community, solve local yeah. problems for their communities. That is the that is the best you can best best form of development. That's the best that, thing you can do. That exactly. you can do for, for you. And so those books actually actually keep refining my mindset about um the work that we do at Salt House and my other organizations as well. Yeah. Promoting see, inclusion. See, uh, David, David. See, like I said, I love to talk to you. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. See, <laughs> if, we, if we continue, <laughs> we will not, we will not <laughs> end so the so so conversation. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, Thank I'm you. so happy. I'm so happy about your work. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Thank see, you, sir. your your inclusion festival. Uh, I I unfortunately I don't know if I if I if I will be able to come. Uh, it will be great. We okay, can make but, that work. But <laughs> I, I don't know if I will be able to come. But but <laughs> but uh, I want to let's talk next month. So tell me what's what's going on. And oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And then hey. Uh, I would talk. I would like to talk to some of your awardees. Hmm? Yeah, sure. Happy so to let's you. let's uh, let's continue talking. Okay. I'm thank so, you, so happy you. talking to you. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. sir. Thank you All so right. very much. Sir. Thank you. I really, I really appreciate the opportunity to be in this room. It's a wonderful room to refine your thoughts and your ideas and go out there and do wonderful things. I just wish we had more. As yeah, you've you, you've actually had. It's a, it's a privilege to be here because there's, <laughs> there's so many persons I look up to. Um, that I've been privileged, like I've been privileged to listen to their, you know, their interviews. And I'm like, this is just the place to refine your ideas. So thank you so much for all that you do for African social entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs and change makers uh, yeah. by creating us a platform to critique our approach to development and then right. go back right. to create what works for people. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take thank care. Thank you. So much. And have a Bye. Yeah. Bye.